earlier I did about getting the phone to ring, right? That's the first thing you want. Yep. That's the first step in the interview, um, regardless of what you, you know, how you want to perceive a, a formal interview, that initial screening that happens. So your, your, your question is about what do they ask you? I'm also going to throw in there what you should be asking them because that's just as important. What, what they're typically gonna ask though, what I've seen in my experience, some, you know, they wanna know a little about your background. Who are you? Again, share, share some of your personality, you know, your professional personality. Share your communication skills, articulate very clearly and say, I have exceptional communication skills. Don't be shy to say it, first of all. They may not ask that question, but they're trying through the process of listening to you to understand your thought process, your communication process, your hard skills and your soft skills. So they're usually gonna ask you a little about yourself. You know, I find that the interview process is like a fire hydrant, a uh, fire hose that opens up on you, the interviewee. You can slow that down and you should slow that down, first of all, because the questions start coming at you rapidly. Where did you do this? How did you do that? I try to slow things down and say, I can answer that question best if I knew a little more about the people that were on this call, if there's several of them, or about you, or about the project. Because now once you have context, you can answer those questions a little quicker. Also, it slows things down a little so you can pull back a little of the control. Typical questions, though, are going to be, tell me about your background. Tell me of some of the applications that you've built. I usually see a question in there about some complexity. It's usually hypothetical. It might be, you know, this the, the user is saying the service is slow. How would you troubleshoot something like that? So they want to understand your thought process. You don't know enough for a question like that to answer straight up. So ask some questions. Well, is that a other 10? What are we serving on that on that client to that client? Is it video? Is it just text? You know, so you can try and slow it down a little bit without dragging it out for five minutes, but I think you're going to see that as a common question, sort of a troubleshooting question. The last piece that you're typically going to see, and this is the one you can't prepare enough for, is a coding challenge. Historically, I've seen either in person or definitely when remote, they ask you, can we're going to, they say, are you okay if we bring up a screen can you click on that? And we're going to screen share with you with a code sharing application. There are several of them out there. Then what they're gonna do is they're gonna drop a question in there of sorts or something they want you, you to develop. I had one recently, it was, you know, um, given a string from one through 10, how would you create a function to print that from 10 to one? Go. And, we, and they're watching you on video, by the way, Diddy, and they're watching your code skills. So don't try to stop and go grab Google, but you need a little Google foo sometimes maybe, if you don't know it off your head, top of your head. I would highly recommend the first thing you do is pseudo code it out on the screen, number one. Then go into the exercise and do your best to apply the pseudo code to the code you wanna develop. It's nerve wracking, it's scary, but it's a question that regularly comes up, which is, Code real time now, go.